During the construction section of creating my music video slash ancillary product package, digital technologies were crucial in creating a professional and high standard piece. I had to ensure I utilised any piece of equipment that became available to me to the highest extent. Different aspects of the production required the use of different technologies in the production slash post-production stages. Firstly, in order to create my ancillary products, I had to use a combination of photographs and text in order to convey the message and create a successful piece of marketing slash advertising. In order to take the images for my digipack slash promotional poster, I used a DSLR, D Digital Single Lens Reflex, camera. This gave me optimum quality and allowed me to take the best possible images for this project due to it adjusting its internal settings automatically to suit the lighting and location I had chosen. The location I had chosen was a very scenic landscape in North Yorkshire. It was a fairly bright day and using the DSLR allowed me to take high quality photographs of not only my artist but landscapes and moving objects such as parachutes. The shutter speed of this camera meant I could capture the parachutes as they were in mid-flight as they weren't blurry or distorted due to the movement. This adjusted automatically dependent on the subject of the image. This meant I got an optimum quality picture and saved time on not having to adjust settings myself and meant I could take pictures instantly and never missed a moment. Once I had taken my photographs, I moved into the post-production stage and used Adobe Photoshop CS5 in order to manipulate my images. The main image of my artist required airbrushing in order to give it a much brighter look and to make him stand out much more against the neutral and calm background. To do this, I used the Gaussian Blur tool and the Contrast slash Brightness tool. This allowed me to follow generic conventions of digipacks within the industry and would make my project distinctive to an audience member if it was to be displayed in a retail store such as HMV. Also, on the, of the covers of my digipack, each individual cover, there were parachutes in the background. These were not present at the time the images were captured, yet I had taken a large body of images of parachutes individually throughout the day. Because of this forward planning, I was able to use the magnetic lasso tool on Adobe Photoshop CS5 to cut around each parachute individually and import this onto separate images I used for the covers. Once I had amended the size and altered the opacity, they looked realistic and very similitude was created. This worked on the entire outside covers, as all the colours for these were similar, meaning the brightness and opacity levels for the parachutes were consistent. As I moved on to creating the inside covers, the colour scheme for this was very different and much more vibrant, meaning I had to alter my method of parachute importation to make the parachutes much more opaque, meaning they would blend more appropriately with the background. I also added a vintage colour layer onto each of the parachutes to make the, once they had been applied to my main image, the inside covers. This enhanced their faded look and made them more distinctive against the background colours. In order to create all of my ancillary products and provide information such as track listing, release dates, artist information and the album title, I had to apply text using Adobe Photoshop CS5. I had firstly decided on a house style font, which would be used throughout my ancillary products in order to maintain continuity. I decided on acoustic light, which varied in colour and size depending on the context which it was used. Much like the parachutes, I had to alter the brightness and opacity of this text in order for it to look in keeping with the rest of the image. An example of how I did this is on my promotional poster, where I added a heavy body of text in this font and changed the brightness slash colour and opacity depending on its positioning on the page, avoiding dull slash grey colours where the background was more neutral and trying to use whites and variations of whites to bring this text out and make it more visible to an audience member. Due to the promotional intention of this particular ancillary product, it had to be created in a way where all crucial aspects of text were distinct and visible in order to attract an audience member's attention. As part of creating verisimilitude for my ancillary products, I looked at conventions of real products circulating within the industry and discovered that all of these had logos for labels and production companies. This meant that I took it upon myself to pastiche these logos and create my own which would be relevant to the artist slash song. I again used Adobe Photoshop CS5 to create these. They were simple to create and I created a record label logo, Claw Records, using the paintbrush tool. It was childish and simplistic drawing which simply promoted the record label and assisted to follow generic conventions of digipacks within the industry. I then used the colour block tool to create a black box and add a white text which read, All cats are born free. This is the name of the production company. This also allowed me to simply promote the company and serve generic conventions of digipacks slash album covers. I followed similar steps to the previous when creating the brand logo, CT Limited, which also allowed me to enhance verisimilitude and follow conventions. After saving the three images as both JPEG and PSD Photoshop document, documents, I then opened the image of the main ancillary product and imported the logos in as PSD documents, which allowed them to be free of background colour, allowing them to be free and transformed. I then positioned these accordingly after much trial and error ended up with my digipack. 
I followed a similar procedure when I was adding convention-based elements to my promotional poster. I had reviewed promotional posters from other artists, and the ones from upcoming artists all include debut album reviews from magazines such as Q and NME. I decided to pastiche this and create my own five-star reviews, which made the poster much more realistic. I created a star template on Photoshop, saved this as both a JPEG and a PSD, then I imported the PSD onto the file of the poster and duplicated it in order to create five stars in a row. I then had to do was add text, which was acoustic light, as this followed my house style. I followed the same procedure when adding the Facebook, Twitter and YouTube logos. In order to create my music video, I relied heavily on digital technologies in order to make it much more convenient to complete the task. In order to film the video, I used two different types of video cameras which could adapt to the location and surroundings that I had chosen. The first of these was a Canon MD101, which is a fairly low standard camera which captures colour and movement at a standard which does not allow for items to be recognisable. The resolution for this camera is 720 by 567 as the pixels for this are not square which allows the picture to go widescreen. The main body of my footage was filmed using this camera. This one is a lesser expensive camera available allowing me to not feel uncomfortable while using it and enabling me to take much more daring shots. As I wanted to create a bright and happy atmosphere I experimented with the settings and eventually decided on the sunset setting as this brought all of the colours out clearly and created a strong contrast. The other camera I used was a Canon Legria HV40. This is the same picture resolution as the MD101 720 x 567 yet the quality of this and the fact it is much more sensitive and aware of light it captures a higher quality picture. I used this for filming my artist lip syncing in the studio at college. Being inside using this higher quality and more market camera made me much more comfortable. The use of the studio also meant I could utilise the different settings and the camera proneness to light by experimenting with the positioning of spotlights and shadows slash silhouettes. For both of these cameras, in order to be able to store all the footage I recorded, I used mini DV tapes. These allowed me to record up to 90 minutes of footage on each, be able to flick through footage and check if anything needed to be reshot or amended. These tapes could then be placed in a camera and connected to a computer, which allowed me to digitally review my footage and cut it slash edit it much more precisely than an analogue method which would have been used in the absence of digital technologies. During post-production of my music video, I edited the footage using Adobe Premiere CS5, non-linear editing Taos 02 Gauntlet 07. Once I had captured the footage onto the software, I began to review and edit this. Adobe Premiere CS5 presented me with a range of tools and techniques that could help me create my preferred reading, Hall 1980, in my music video. A tool that I frequently use is the Razor tool. This entitled me to cut the footage whenever I needed to. This allowed me to create cuts, cross cuts and jump cuts. I could then use the Move tool to rearrange footage in a structured order to create a clear narrative. O'Sullivan 1998, stated that all media products start by establishing a plot or theme. So in order to connote this, I visited the Effects section on Adobe Premiere CS5 and selected a dip from black, which I placed at the start of my video in order to clearly connote the beginning. Then at the end, I replicated my use of effects by selecting a dip to black, which clearly connoted the ending. The presence of a timeline on Adobe Premiere CS5 meant that I could clearly keep track of my footage and arrange this accordingly to the structure and narrative of my product. This timeline also meant I could make my footage as precise and as in-keeping with the music as possible. I found this particularly useful when matching the visuals to the music and to the lyrics. Goodwin, Visuals Match Music slash Visuals Match Lyrics, 1992. This became possible as I could zoom into the timeline down to a single frame and move footage the short distance either forwards or backwards. The last technology I used during the construction of my music video is After Effects. I used this to add a title sequence to the start and end of my music video. At the start of the video, I used After Effects to apply text which read the following. An All Cats Are Born Free production, Tom Hemingway in, Everything's Alright in France. I chose a handwritten font for this as it added to the quirky style of the video. It also connoted and reinforced the low budget grassroots folk culture gauntlet 2008 style of the video. I then repeated this at the end of the video and added text of the same font which read the following, the end. This was followed by Dip to Black applied on Adobe Premiere CS5 and the video ended. The use of After Effects meant I could apply aspects to the video which clearly connoted the beginning and end to the structure and added a further visual element to the video which would attract an audience member's attention.